Hi, this is Paul from Cuddlepot Bootcamp. After looking at what's out there, we decided to use Right Start Mathematics. Join me today as I talk to Kathleen Cotolola, Vice President and General Manager, as well as the daughter of the program's creator, Dr. Joan Cotter. She'll explain how the program was made and what's special about it, and she'll even take us through some lesson examples. Thank you so much for coming um, and making the time to talk with me today, uh, Kathleen. Uh, Ru and I both really appreciate it. Um, we love Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, so we love Right Start Mathematics. It's a great program. We love the manipulatives, particularly, and how they're used in the program. Our son's having so much fun with it and a lot of success too. Um, Good. Just want to let you know. And um, I thought it might be nice if we start off by talking a little bit about how it was developed. Is there anything you can tell us about about that yeah. the history of the program? Um, my my name is Kathleen Cotter Lawler. This was developed by Dr. Joan A. Cotter. So if you notice, there was a Cotter on both ends of that. I am her daughter. I'm actually the oldest of the three children of hers. So she actually developed the program back when my brother, uh, the youngest of the three of us, was having difficulties in math. He was in third grade and he was in the public school system. And every day in math class, he would be have such math anxiety, he would literally throw up Tuesday, Wednesday. So because of the difficulties he was having and they weren't able to work with him, they moved him to another school that today we would probably call a charter school. I don't know if you have those in Australia, but no, they're yeah. don't. Okay. Well, they could be, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. In the, yeah. in the, in the United States, it's a kind of an alternative school and there's different flavors and varieties. And, and this was probably again, one of the, it would be considered a charter school today. Um, but one of the things they did with this particular school is they said, all parents must donate so many hours to make the school function. Well, since Dr. Cotter's an, um, excuse me, an electrical engineer, and she's, she's a math person, with my brother having math problems, she thought, okay, well, this is what we need to work on. So she started to create card games to help him practice his math facts. And some of the people in school said, these are great. You should write this down. And she went, what? Oh, okay. And that was actually the beginning of the whole program as she was writing down these card games. Uh, the car math card games book is now in its fifth edition. Um, so we, we've had some renditions, you know, some changes and, and things since then. But then once she got my brother kind of back on track and he's no longer throwing up, um, and by, he, by the way, is a, an engineer himself now. So he recovered very nicely from his difficulties. Oh, that's um, remarkable. That's a remarkable yeah, change yeah. from having a, a pathological phobia to, yeah. to embracing it. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he did very well with it. Then she started, probably from the school and from other sources, started to teach children with some special needs. And she started to play around with it and said, okay, yeah, the games are good, but I need something else, something. And she tried this and tried that. And then she tried those colored rods and no, that wasn't it. And then she started to play around and that's where she developed the abacus. So the abacus that we know today, or abacus here, you kind of see it. Yep. The abacus that we know today is probably about 15 years of development. And it's, it's, it's like really it took 15 years to come up with that. But it's one of those things where you try this and then you change it just a little bit and you keep changing it until you get it to kind of the elegant, clear, understandable model that we have today. Um, she's also, Dr. Cotter's also a Montessorian. Um, she actually received her diploma from Mario Montessori, who's Dr. Montessori's son. She's the only class, she was the one in that, she was the one class that actually received the, the diploma handed from and signed by Mario Montessori. So that's wow. pretty cool. Well, and direct then, lineage, that's, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Talk about awesome. I mean, that's a treasure. Yeah. So she knows how math is applied. She knows what the kids are thinking. Then she kind of continued to work and she kind of played around for a bit. And then she went back to school and said, she went back and got her master's degree in a curriculum instruction and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach. I want to see what we can do with this. And so she started teaching sixth, seventh graders and said, these guys are idiots. Not because they're stupid, but you can't be doing higher level math if you don't have your basics. Yeah, and, of course. And she yeah. said, we've got a problem. We need to come back and get these elementary information taken care of. So she went back to school again and got her PhD in mathematics education with an emphasis on brain research. And her doctoral dissertation 
was Right Start Math. So it's actually been available to homeschoolers since 2001. And then the second edition came out in 2013. Okay. So that's kind of how it's developed. Um, an interesting note, when she went to get her doctoral dissertation, she knew she was going to do with the work that she was work had been working on. Um, her husband, my father, said, what if you find that what you're doing doesn't work? And she said, oh, I'll change it then. Yeah. Which I think is yeah. really important because so many people take, and this is my idea, this is my baby, I've been working for 20 years on my baby, and what do you mean it doesn't work? I'll, I'll make it work, just give me a minute. But she didn't yeah. do that, she was very open with it and said, is this it? Oh, this isn't, oh yes, this is it. And it was kind of interesting to find the things that she did with her previous work, she's got the, the data and the research to support that what she was instinctively doing is the right thing. Now, there's yeah. been things, of course, as she's progressed over time that she's changed a little bit here and changed a little bit there. But the the bulk, the primary philosophy has not changed, which I think is very interesting. Yeah, that's great. That's how yeah. the whole thing started. Yep. Yeah. So, so she had, yeah, yeah, that's great. So she had the an insight into how, how to do it and then just paid careful attention to it and, and developed it over time. I really love that what you said at the end about the willingness to to alter it if, if need be. Right. And I offer it up, you know, as a, yeah. as a, yeah. As a, yep. yeah. Um, so how is uh, the program fundamentally different to other curricula out there like uh, Maths UC or um, Singapore Maths, for example? What makes, what makes the program different? The big difference is the abacus. Yeah, because, because with the abacus, you can subitize. So, for example, if I put on this many beads, I'll scoot it up a little closer. If I put on this many beads, you can clearly yeah. see that you've got five and two more. Yeah. Actually, I did that yeah, backwards. I can see that. That's funny. I actually yep. did it backwards. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. So things yeah. backwards. You can see that you've got yeah. five and two. There's no guessing. But if I just held up, if I just held up seven... Well, if I held up this many fingers, how many's there? You can't yeah. see so much. But if I group it. They're all in the line. Yeah, one, they're all in the line. One. Yep. And now you yep. can see I've got five and two. Yep. You can see it. Our human brains are developed for grouping and to, to have things grouped in fives and tens. And so many program, if they say 27, they just show you like 27 ducks. They don't show you like we do, make sure I go the right way this time. Here's 10, two tens, so 27. Yeah. You can see yeah. that it's right there. You don't mm -hmm. have to think about it. You don't have to count. I can just see it's 27. That's the big yeah. difference between us and others is we've got this subitizing and we build on that. Yeah, you know, I only heard that um, term subitizing recently, um, but I remember playing with dominoes. As a kid, you know, oh, yeah. you know, dominoes and, yeah. you know, you're like matching the dominoes and yeah, that's, that's kind of what you do or dice, you know, it's the same kind of thing, isn't it? So, right. but um, yeah, the, ab the abacus is just incredible. When, when I first saw that and Rue explained to me how, how it works, cause we're looking at it together and she looked at it before me and um, I was just amazed and, and I actually felt sad that I didn't have that resource growing up. Right. I, I felt yeah. like this actual, ha. Oh, <laughs> like I, I've been, I've been jits, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Um, we actually, so I hear that a lot from from parents as they're teaching this that they're like, oh, why didn't anybody ever tell me this? How come I never knew this? And yeah. and I yeah. didn't have that yeah. myself. It I'm is, one, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Oh no, that's fine. I was just gonna say I'm one of the proofers for the Right Start books and. Um, I remember level A, which is kind of a kindergarten, pre-kindergarten, first grade, depending upon how you're looking at it. With the level A, I, I, I'm not stupid. I have a double master's, but I went through the level A kindergarten and went, what? That? Oh, that's what that means? Because I was taught the traditional way. I, remember, I'm, I'm the first child. She, they got better after me. So yeah, exactly. once I'm reading the lesson myself, I'm saying, oh, my goodness, look at this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was actually hoping, uh, Kathleen, if you could go through one of the lessons from one of the books and show us how they give us a rundown of one of the lessons. 
Absolutely. Let me do that. I'm going to switch over my camera here. Thanks. Okay, give me a second here. So we are going to be looking at oh, this wonderful. back here. So we're going to look at, I just kind of am picking, just kind of somewhat random. Oops, get this straight here so you can see better. This is the Right Start Math. This is the level B. So I'm just going to pick a random lesson. As you can see, I don't have anything marked. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to scooch this in so you can see a little bit better. Whoops, it's not go crooked. So yep. here's your title. Here's your objectives. Pay attention to what the objectives say. Because it says here, this one's to experience trading. It doesn't say to master trading. It doesn't say to be completely proficient on trading. Here, we're just experiencing it. So are there going to be errors? Absolutely. Now, if it says to practice, to master, then there should be very few errors. So pay attention to what the objectives are. Here's my materials. So this way I can come in and say, son, go grab the place value cards and the base 10 cards. So you know yep. all your materials that you're going to need for the day. Then as we come down here, let's get that straight again. Sorry. Yep. Here's my warm up. This is going to be a review of something we've done in the past or it's something I want to make sure is solid before we launch into the rest of the lesson. And it's scripted for you. Ask, what is more, 3,000 or 700? Here's the answer if you're having a rough day. It's actually 3,000. Which is greater, 1,000 or 1,000? They're the same. Which is less? So basically, as long as you can read, you can teach this. It tells yeah. you what to do. Yeah. Then down here, now we're getting into our lesson. So it tells you what to do with the child and how to do it. Down here, you can just see at the end here, there's going to be notes, explanations. This will tell you why you're doing, oops, we'll go this way. This will tell you why you're doing what you're doing. What's the research behind it? What if your child's struggling? What if they're gifted? So there's lots of little notes. This isn't really teaching. This one is just saying the order of trading is not important. Uh, calculating mentally or on a calculator is easier to do when starting at the left. Only on paper is it easier to start on the right. You don't need to know this for teaching it, but it's interesting okay. to know. Okay. okay. Then we continue cool. up here. So that's, that's your non-essential uh, information, but just helps you, the explanations okay. there. Is that, right. is that correct? Right. Yep. And it's kind of funny. When we do the explanations, let me go back down here. Sometimes it's kind of funny. Oh, it's right there. It's kind of funny with these because there's, I remember one time as Dr. Cotter and I were, she was writing something. And again, I was, I'm kind of a proofing and a soundboard for her. I, I asked her something and she said, well, you know why we're doing it. I said, I know why we're doing it, but Paul and Rue don't know why we're doing it. She's like, yeah. all right. So she writes the note. So we try, yeah, right. we try to be very um, careful to answer the questions that we think you're going to have. Like, why am I doing this? Yeah. This is actually our second edition. The first edition doesn't have these explanations in there. And there's a lot of times with the first edition where we just kind of pat you on the head and say, just, just do it. Well, why? Just, just do it. And that's yes. with the second edition. We tell you why we're doing it. Yeah, that's good. I think that, this that, is very yeah. important. Yeah. I like okay? that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Activities. Here's up on the top. Tell me what I'm doing. I'm repeating it. And then I have an in conclusion. The in conclusion. Let me get that straight again. Sorry. The in conclusion, this is going to be a review of what we've done for the day, or it's going to be a higher level thinking question. If it's a higher level thinking question and your child doesn't get it, that's okay because we'll deal with it another day. And also, too, it gives them time to kind of sit and mull it over and think, well, maybe possibly. But if it's a review, they should answer it. If they don't, that's okay. We'll work with it. Here's going to be the next day's lesson. So now we're up on the top again to get it straight again, objectives, materials. If you see something in bold, this is something that is not in your kit. This is something you're going to have to find around the house here. It's following numbers on separate slips of paper tells you what the numbers are. Okay. Make your own. So we're not yeah. going to give you everything, including pencils. Okay. Some things when they're bold, you'll need to have them prepared. Yeah. And the lessons continue from there. Now, I'm going to take two seconds. I'm going to show you what a level F looks like. Because this was a B. So now F is going to be about a fifth, sixth grade. 
actually, let me pull one out here. Here, we're looking at volume problems. But it's got the same format, objectives, materials. Actually, it's interesting. All the objectives I've given you have only just one. <laughs> There's another one here. Sometimes you'll get them with a bunch. Yeah. As you do, it's going to the same format, objectives, materials. Here's your warm-up. We go down the page, top of the next. This one didn't have any notes. And my conclusion down here. Oh, I guess it does right down here. Yeah, there's something in there. Yeah, Find the email. Yep. Okay. So they have the same format. The level, I'm going to switch my camera here. The level A through, hi again. Um, the level A and B, you're going to use the abacus almost every day. Scoot just a little bit closer. Um, yep. A and B, you're going to use the abacus almost every day, and you're going to do maybe a worksheet a week. Maybe, okay. you know, maybe a little okay. bit more, not by much. C and D, you'll use the abacus probably two to three times a day, and you'll have a, a worksheet about two to three times a day. Or that day, excuse yeah, me. Mean, wait, yeah, Sorry, wait, yeah. a week. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't get panicking. Yeah, yeah. Level, level E and F, you're using the abacus maybe once a week, and you've got worksheets four to five times a week. Okay. But we're also older at that point. They can handle yeah. You know, yeah, we're not sure. taking your, yeah, we're not taking your beautiful six-year-old and parking him in the corner with a ream of paper and say, get your work done. Yeah. It, yeah, it, I it, think it, it stands to reason that it, like, kids have got to become accustomed to working with, with paper and working on their own. If right. you like, as they get older, you wouldn't expect them to be able to do it at the beginning. Um, and that, that brings me to my next question, um, which I have, um, which is... Um, is this, is this program something that parents can do while they're juggling other things around the house? How much involvement um, do they need to have with it while they're, while, they're, while they're teaching the kids? Very very good question. This is not a program where you can purchase it, give it to the kid, and then see them in the spring. You are going to put time into it. Um, I kind of think about it like when you bring a new a new baby home, you don't, you know, say, say it's your second child. It's like, oh, I just finally got the first one to sleep and now I got this new creature, you know, up every two to three hours. You don't just say, sorry, you're child number two, you're going to have to sleep through the night. You know, what do you do? You get up and you put the time and you, it's, it's the same thing with math. Yeah. So when they're little with math, you need to put that time into them. As they get older, they're going to become more independent. So like in our program, once we hit ENF, you've got more worksheets, which means they're more independent. Okay. By the time you get to G and H, they are independent fully. Okay. So you're not there. So how do you handle it? Let's just say you've got, like I had four kids in five years. We had some chaos. See if you can put two kids together. Can you lump the kids together? Or have the older ones play card games with the little ones. Yeah. That way the older ones are reinforcing, the little ones are learning. And it gives you that's time. That's going to be good for the older child. kids too. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's, that's got to be good for the older kids too. Did you? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yep. It, yeah, it teaches them family values. It teaches them te you know, how to teach, how to be kind. Uh, yeah. You know, there's so many things, and never mind that they're practicing their math skills. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember looking after my my brothers and yeah. when I was a kid. I think that was a, a good experience for me. I just wanted to share that. Um, and anyway, um, yeah, so it can be done. It's it's an investment. Like you've got to yeah. invest the time into it. Um, and math is is one of the core core subjects, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, how, how, how many minutes a day uh, is, is, does a lesson take anyway? Um, we usually say 30 to 45 minutes. Sometimes yeah. I hear people say 20. Okay, that can happen. Sometimes it'll be an hour. It, it really yeah. depends upon the topic, the child, the day. You know how it works sometimes, the wind speed. I mean, it, yeah. it, so many things can affect a child sure. and their learning. But if you get to a point where your you know, three fourths done, and the child has checked out. You're just like, oh, I want to get it done. Close the book, pick mm -hmm. it up tomorrow at that same spot. Yeah. You know, you yeah, do not true. have to. It's nice if you start and stop at the beginning and end, but you don't have to because I don't know your child. I can't say you shall do the following. It's intended to be done one lesson a day, 
but again, I don't know your child. You have to adapt. You know the children, you know, what, what's yeah. best for them. So it should take about 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes a little bit shorter, sometimes a little bit longer, but play the games. One thing I like to see is typically, not always, but typically the the wife is the one who's doing the teaching. Sometimes, again, it's, it's the father. I don't I don't know how you guys yeah. do it, but, yeah. but let's, let's just say traditionally it's it's the wife who's doing it. Then then when it's time to play the card games, have that be daddy time. That sounds like fun. Be, yeah, because, well, the thing is, is you know, yeah. dad gets back from yeah. work or whatever. He needs to spend time with the kids. Well, what you can do is mom spent the day with the kids. This way, dad plays spends the time playing the games with the kids. They're getting their math done. They're getting daddy time. The wife is getting some solitude. It, it's just kind of a win-win all the way across that's the board. That's really good. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's yeah, lots of ways to take yeah. larger families and work it in. And that's something yeah. that if anyone ever gets stuck, on the back of all of our books, there is a toll-free phone number right here. There's a toll-free phone okay. number that you can call us and we can help you. I mean, we're not going to do marriage counseling or anything like that, but anything <laughs> math related, you know, how do I do this with my kids? How do I organize yeah. my manipulatives? How do I organize this? What can I do with that? How do I get my older kid to do this? We'll do what we can to help you. That's really great. That's quite incredible. Um, so, yeah, so what, something else I wanted to mention was that um, the, you know, because there's so many games and activities, it's, it's a hands-on approach and it's, it's a really fun way to introduce the math concepts and, and to learn the math concepts for the kids. And that's meant that our son's actually been able to do it at quite a young age. Um, but we're just curious to know how early you think kids can start doing the program from. Uh, what's Usually, your experience? Okay, that, that's a very good question. Usually they're four or five. Sometimes some families will want to wait till six and start them. But usually they're about five-ish, you know, take or leave okay. a couple of years. Having said that, I know about 10, two and a half year olds who are starting in level A. Now, obviously we've got a bright batch of kids here, or we've got some parents who have yeah. a lot of time and energy and, and yeah. we can do that. But when you, yeah. if you're starting younger, then take that lesson and that lesson may work out over a week or two yeah. weeks, depending upon the yeah. child. You don't have to do a lesson a day you know, when you're potty training, you can, you can be flexible with it because again, your child may be very interested for a month and then not want anything to do it for a month. Okay. You know, they're, they're three, they're four, whatever. But once yeah. we start to hit school age, whatever you define as school age, it loosely should be a lesson a day. Again, yeah. not knowing your child you and your life. able to do that. Yeah. Right. But, but yeah, two and a half, that's incredible. Um, yeah, that, that, that kind of reminds me with us. So um, our son's three, which is kind of almost that. But um, at the beginning, we, we just, you know, just, just, what's the word? We just, uh, just to see how he's going to go with it. What, what's it yeah. called when you just, right. you know, putting your feet in the water, you know, yeah. just, just seeing what's going on. And then, yeah, he started taking to it. And I, I'm not sure... Um, I think he does a lesson, like he will do a lesson in a ah. day now, but um, there's no there's no pressure. I think it can be right. spaced over a couple of days. Yeah, I think because well, he's done about fifty, he's done about fifty, oh and he hasn't been word. doing it for that long. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, in a few months. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, wow, that's great. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see what your daughter does then, because she will be already yeah. kind of exposed to it and hear all yeah, of the, in the activities and yes. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's uh, it's their games and activities, so it's, yeah. it's just like you know, he wants to. And yeah. when we first got it, when we first got it, because it came from the states and that this big package, yeah. we're so excited, and, it, and he's like, Man, it? and it was this big thing. And when we started doing it, he was just so excited. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was a really good experience. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that brings me to uh, another question. There is that um, it is one of the more expensive programs out there. Um, and that's clearly because of the range of manipulatives. Yes. Quite a big range of um, manipulatives that's used. I know that you can, they are for all the levels. There's quite a few levels and years that you use them for. So I've I no doubt that you get the value yes. for money. But can you tell us a little bit about the range of manipulatives and why that large range is necessary? Could you? Okay. 
very good question. So here's, I, I've got a little thing here. This kind of shows yep. all of the things in the math set. So all yep. these materials are used. Now, in level A that you're going with your son, there's, there's about six things in here that you're not going to use. Um, and okay. by the time you get to F, there might be another six, a different six that you're not using. Um, but all these I are- I can't wait to use that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I can't wait to use the soccer ball. Oh. It's not a, it's not a soccer ball. Yeah, you know, yeah, soccer ball. yeah. It's yeah. actually a, oh, the name just escaped me. I just had it in my head. Um, I can't Your, think of what it is. It's a truncated, I think it's a truncated octahedron. And oh, there's okay. nothing cuter than seeing a three or four-year-old saying truncated oct octahedron. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's right. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but you've got all of these manipulatives. So you may show something to a child on the abacus, but then you ex re-explain it or re-enjoy -en it with the math balance. And, and so things are approached different ways. Because you know how it is. Sometimes when you have something, I can learn it. But if I see it a different way, oh, yeah. now I get it. Yeah. Because so many curricula just have it one way and that's it. And yeah. I hope you got it. And this in a way, I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually like encouraged by, by the kind of you know hold no, what's what's the expression no bars hold no bars what's, what, you know, it just go in there you know bring your resources because this no is a course bar. subject no yeah. holds barred yeah no holds barred that's what yeah. it is it's a wrestling term right um, yeah. just get in there bring your resources because this is a core subject get serious with it and it's going to yeah. pay off. You know, I, I was really encouraged when, when we saw the range and then yeah. the price. But um, I think you mentioned or, or that there is um, uh, like an economical starter kit. Or, or, there is. Or, yep. There is. And let me show you this real quick here. With this kit, it's actually used from levels A to H. When you get to G and H, you need to add, I think it's two more items, two or, I think it's two more items you need to add. But this is going to actually take you for seven years, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Yeah, seven, seven years. I think that's right. Um, but it's, it's going to take you. So if you've got, you know, it's, it's 209 U.S. dollars divided by, let me just check my A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Yeah, so it's seven, seven years. Can't get that yeah, right. That's no. but, you know, <laughs> you divide that out, yeah. then it's not so bad. And then since you've got a daughter, okay, well now I'm actually going to divide it by 14 years. Yeah. yeah. Then it's not so bad. So basically, yeah. I see it as you have an initial investment, and then you're ready to roll. Exactly. But sometimes yeah. you still have to have you have to have peanut butter with your jelly. So we have because you only have so much money. We also have yeah. a super saver kit. So this is all the things that you can't buy elsewhere, like okay. our book, our cards, our abacus, all these things that are kind of specialty items, very difficult to find. You get this. Now it's 114. But then here's the things that you're getting. These things yep. you're going to download and you're going to print them off yourself. So they're not going to be as nice as the ones that you would buy. But you know what? At least now you got peanut butter in the household. So it, yeah, you exactly. can work with this. And then there's some things down here that you will need to find yourself. For example, calculator, just go find one. Um, you know, geared clock, find one in a store, take the clock off the wall. Um, coins, pull some out of your wallet. You know, you, you can, there are things around the house that you can work with. So you can do the super saver kit or you can do the, um, the regular math set. Either will work. Yeah, that's great. So, yeah, I mean, it's not too much to ask. <laughs> I think about that. Um, so I've just got one more question for you, Kathleen. So um, some curricula um, out there involve references to religious ideas, um, mm -hmm. like, and, and so they're not secular throughout. So, for example, there's um, a Becca, I think, and um, the good and the beautiful I think there's some references to religion in there. We're just wondering where Right Start Mathematics um, stands in that regard, whether it's got any any kind of references. There are, belief. yep, there are no references um, because for, for two reasons. One, math doesn't need it. M math is math. I, I, there, there's nothing else to say. It, it has the logic. It has its beauty. It has its rhyme and reason. It's right there. There's nothing more. You don't need to put it in. 
<coughs> um, if you want to, <laughs> this is Dr. Cotter's husband, my, my father. He says this with a little sarcastic tone. He says, get a sticky pad, write whatever Bible verse you want on there, slap it on the page, and then the next day, yeah. take it off and put it on the next one. Yeah, you could do it, it like that. <laughs> Because to me, the thing is, is every family has their own aspect, perspective, beliefs, concerns. I don't think math is a place for us to teach that. Whatever your beliefs are or are not, that's not my business. We're, our business is math. And that's what we yeah. do is math. So this works beautifully for everybody who believes in this, believes in that, doesn't believe in this, doesn't believe in that whatever we're teaching math so we have no reference so technically we're secular but we're not really secular because we're not like anti we just it, it's not a point yeah i just um yeah those are all the questions so um thank you i've, I've got um thank you so much for your time thank you Kathleen. um it was a real pleasure talking to you um is there anything else you'd like to add anything I you'd like to tell so oh, I do have I do have one thing for you. I do want to tell you for the Australians, we do have an Australian version of our math card games book. Oh yes. Oh wonderful. The difference the difference between this math card games book and the one in the US is that the money chapter, because obviously addition is addition, multiplication is multiplication, but the money chapter, let me go find it real quick here, is going to reference I don't know if I could find it. These games are going to adapt more to your coins. Then we also have, and I have it in a package. Sorry, it's going to yep. apparently uh, they it's look familiar. Your, it's actually your coins. Yep, yep. It's not. It's not our coins. So you don't take your your three year old son and say, okay, here's the U.S. coins. Pretend it's a you know, he can actually work with his coins while he's playing the games. And I think that's yeah, very important. That's, that's really important. Have, yeah. Yep, we've got an Australian version, we've got a New Zealand, we've got a Euro and a Canadian version. We so kind of think the American money is kind of cool. Yeah. We like the we like quarters and what nickels yeah. and dimes. I'm not sure what they are. Yeah. But yeah, obviously it's best to work with what we got here. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I, I do the same thing yeah. with yours. When I travel, I like to gather coins from different places. So I yeah. have strange coins from all over in weird places around my house. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice one. Okay. Well, I thank you very much for your time again, Kathleen. And I'll, I'll let you go. Yep. All right. You thank you so it. much, Paul. All right. Have a good thank day. You. Bye bye. Okay. One plus nine equals ten. Equals ten.